Revelations chapter number five, verse number eight. Hey, where y'all going? Y'all come back. We got work to do. We're going to do this together. We're going to work together. Revelations chapter number five. If y'all need to use the restroom, that's fine too. You know, I know. I know. That's against ECC. Um, Revelation chapter number five, y'all. It says, you are worthy to take the scroll. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you are slain. And with your blood, you purchase for God persons from every tribe and language and nation. Because of the blood, we've been able to ignite the incense. Psalm 142, write the note. Uh, I'm going to go through some of these quickly. Psalm 142, verse number one. Psalm 142 says, My bad. Psalm 141. My bad. Psalm 141 says this. <clears throat> I call to the Lord, come quickly to me. Hear me when I call you. Verse number two. My prayer be set before you like incense. Somebody say incense. Say it like you ate breakfast. Say incense. May the lifting of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. My, may my prayer be before you like incense. Y'all heard what I said? May my prayer be before you like incense. Now I'm going to put this puzzle together. In Revelation 5 verse 8, it talks about how God takes the prayers of humanity. Every prayer that you prayed, he keeps them in a bottle for eternity. You heard what I said? For eternity. Everything you prayed about, everything you confessed about, he puts them in a bottle for eternity. Now, in the Old Testament, there was, in Exodus chapter number 30, there was an altar, and this altar represented how God wanted to be communicated with. This altar had four different sections, north, south, east, and west, and there were certain sections that meant certain things. I want to demonstrate this morning that culture still has an appetite to recreate this altar. They, are duplic they want to duplicate and sometimes are complicit in the behavior they're trying to replicate the days of old. Incense was a big deal. Incense represented the prayers of the saints all throughout the Old Testament. In Exodus chapter number 30, Exodus chapter number 30, God gives the prescriptions on how to make this incense. And he says, I don't want anybody to make this incense ever because this incense is reserved for me. Somebody shout incense. This incense is reserved for me, so I don't want anybody trying to duplicate this incense because when this incense goes in the sanctuary, it represents the prayers of my children. Now, the only way this incense could be lit is that he had to take fire from the altar and light the incense. When this incense goes up, it is the prayers of the saints. It is all the things that we have prayed to God. And here it is. What we started to do because we don't want to pray, we start trying to find substitutes to get the results that only prayer can give. And so what has come about, which is not a new thing, it's an old thing, it's been around forever since Rome and the days of the Ethiopians is that we will take sage 
and we will try to burn this sage to cleanse spaces, environments, negative energy, generate wisdom, clarity, and to promote healing. You can't attempt to burn sage in the place of a job that prayer does. Because what prayer is, is the sage that culture is mixing. When we try to light up, there was Kyrie Irving who was lighting up a sage in an arena trying to get these bad spirits out of a center. And what he failed to realize is you don't need to light that type of incense. All you need to do is get on your knees and when you begin to pray, your prayers become the sage that you were trying to utilize to dispel the things that are in your path. It is the heart of a man embedded is the desire to bring divinity to humanity. It's everybody's attempt. We're all trying to figure out a way to bring God into our spaces. And God was simply saying, even in the Old Testament and the New Testament, all you need to do is ignite the incense. And instead of us going before God and igniting the incense on our knees, we've substituted that incense for things that we think can produce the result that we're not willing to labor for. I want to ask you, it is Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King, the one who, who started the 95 Theses. He says, I got so much work to do. I got work, 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 work to do. And he says, but before I work, I'm going to spend three hours praying so that God can work when I can't work. Now I know you're here thinking, man, my God, three hours, I can't get 30 minutes. But on your drive to work, it's 30 minutes. We must remember, y'all, the goal of prayer is to get the ear of God. Unless that is gained, the prayer has utterly failed. Charles Spurgeon says, we must remember the goal of prayer is to get the ear of God. Unless that is gained, prayer has utterly failed. The reason why people resort to utilizing other substitutes is because they don't recognize their own identity in God. That if you knew your identity in God, you would know that when you pray, you ignite the incense. Prayer is not a last second emergency tool for those who have entertained no interest in knowing God. Prayer is not a last second emergency tool that we utilize because we are not hearing God. I want you to know this morning that when you and I pray, we ignite the incense. Do you believe that? No, you got to believe that because you need to believe it for your own house. You got to believe it for your own space. You, you got to, the church should empower you to believe that for yourself. You don't need to burn anything in a room that does not have God's spirit. You just need to ignite the incense. And sometimes when in the Old Testament, when God was so against them lighting up incense, trying to duplicate what he was trying to do, sometimes they would light up incense and the reverse would happen. The space that you're trying to clear out becomes more cluttered with another spirit. So incense is important because it was all throughout scripture, incense but it was a representation of what was important. The incense that we offer to God is critically important because the incense in the Old Testament was God's representation of prayers. But that had to be ignited by something. It had to be ignited by fire. The, the incense aroma would not fill the temple unless it was ignited by fire. Y'all follow me, right? Because you got to follow me. The incense was not ignited unless it was ignited by fire. 
If you did not have fire from the altar, the incense would not be ignited and the scent would not go up before God's nostrils. Well, pastor, you may be asking a very vital question. Where do we get the fire from today? If, if we can't get it from the brazen altar, where do, where do we get the fire? Well, I'm glad you asked. In Acts chapter number 2, God told a group of people, I need you to wait for help to come. But when this help comes, it's going to be a little different. It's going to sit on you like tongues of fire. It's going to help you ignite some things that you could not ignite on your own. And they stayed in the upper room, 120 of them. There was more than 120, but some of them couldn't wait long enough for God to come. So instead of waiting, they left and try to create their own solution. This is what happens to many of us. When we get tired of waiting, we create our own solution. When we don't see God coming on the third day, we get up and do our own thing. When we don't see God coming on the fourth day, we get up and do our own thing. When we don't see God coming on the fifth day, we get up and do our own thing. Pentecost is important because it's 50 days after the resurrection, God sends this helper. This helper is there to ignite your incense. When you pray, if it was just us praying alone, God wouldn't hear us because we're not worthy enough. But this helper goes before and ignites the incense. So I'm trying to get you to see something. You don't need anybody to do it for you. You can do it yourself because it's a dangerous thing to leave your spiritual life in the hands of somebody else. You got to ignite your own soul. You got to ignite your own fire. And some of the reason why evil comes around you is because you ain't been igniting anything. If you ignite fire, the things that try to come upon you will burn themselves because they can't touch you because you've ignited the fire. You've ignited the smoke. I just want to know, is there smoke at your house? I know you say you don't want this smoke, but I want to know, is there smoke at your house? I know what you did on the front row, on the second row, on the third row, in the balcony, but I want to know, is there smoke at your house? Have, have you been lighting up the fire at your own space? Have you been lighting up the flame at your own location? Have you been igniting the switch with the power of the Holy Spirit? The minute you're saved, you got an ignition switch. It gives you power to ignite fire. It gives you power to ignite fire. It gives you power to ignite fire. I'm talking about fire. I'm talking about real fire. I'm talking about a fire that can't be put out by water. I'm talking about a fire that people cannot see but God sees. It's an invisible smoke. The minute you begin to let the Holy Spirit lead you in the prayer, you ignite fire. And when you ignite fire, I'm telling you, it's a smoke that no one can see but God sees. You go into a test, ignite that fire. See what God does. You move into a house, ignite that fire. Don't light that sage, baby. You got incense on the inside of you. And when you light that match on the inside of you, it begins to spark a flame. And it begins to clear out the room. It begins to give you clarity. Now, they got the right definition. If you pray right, it'll give you clarity. If you pray right, it'll give you insight. If you pray right, it'll give you peace. But, but here, incense was made up of three things in Exodus that Moses was told to, to create this incense. He was told, you need to create this incense, and this incense is made up of certain ingredients, and these ingredients are important. Somebody shout incense. Say it with some life. Praise him. Help me. Shout incense. Okay, say it again like y'all singers. Say it with some authority. Say incense. Okay, I, I really can't hear y'all. So help me, help me. Even Joel, you're a part of my choir now. Say it with me. Say incense. 
incense. Incense is powerful because when you strike that match, you're releasing incense. You're releasing smoke wherever you are. And there's something about you. Have you ever met somebody that says, there's just something about you. I don't know what it is. How many of you ever had that happen? There's just something about you. That's that smoke that's around you. You don't see it, but they see it. You don't know it, but they know it. When you go before and you let God go before your day, there's smoke that's already went ahead of you. It's a hedge that goes round about you. Now, there was things that was required to make the incense. Number one, they had this stack, which was a fragrant gum from a tree. Rabbis suggested that this is the balm of Gilead. There were four different ingredients in this incense. And this is interesting because the great physician who heals, whose name is Jesus, is the balm of Gilead. This incense is made of stack, which is very much about preparation. In order to get this ingredient, it must be, it's a very pure form of myrrh. It flows spontaneously from the tree stock once the tree has been pierced, broken, and crushed. Maybe God is developing the ingredients of your incense by piercing you. Maybe he's developing your prayer life by crushing you. Maybe he's developing the ingredients of your incense by removing the impurities that are in our prayers. Number two, this is a unique one. It's O-N-Y-C-H-A. It's a sweet smelling part of a shellfish. It's a very sweet smelling part of a, smell, of a shellfish. But the interesting thing about this one is the odor only comes out when the flesh is burned. Yeah, y'all heard what I said. It's sweet, but you can't smell it till the flesh is burned. Maybe you have a sweet anointing that we can't smell, but your flesh ain't burned. Somebody shout, burn my flesh. Y'all ain't say it like you believe it. Say, burn my flesh. I said, say, burn my flesh. These ingredients are necessary to create this incense that God said, I don't want anybody to duplicate it. The third that he uses is he uses galbanum. It represents a disagreeable smelling spice that comes from a different type of plant. But when this plant is broken up, when this plant is fully submitted, it brings out a consistent fragrance. You know why our prayer ingredients don't ignite? Because they're not consistent. I believe some of the trials that we are in are God using them to bring consistency. Because you can't only pray to God when God is about to open a door. You can't pray to God only when you believe in God to do something great for your life. It's got to be something that's consistent. The, the average Christian in the New Testament pray three times a day. The Muslims pray five times. They set their times aside. What's your times? You can't be consistent if you don't schedule it. And if you don't tell your time where to go, you'll wonder where it went. It's the priority that makes us smell like him. And, and Gilbanum is interesting because it, it doesn't smell good 
until it's fully burned and then it releases something sweet that was trapped in something stinky. Can I tell you that even the stinky seasons of your life are producing something sweet that you can't see right now, you can't understand it right now, but it's producing something sweet. And the last one is the pure frankincense. This tree is bruised three times in order to cause all the resin to be released. This was a type and foreshadowing of Jesus that when the incense would go forth, the only way it was activated was this, this, this frankincense myrrh would, would only come when it was bruised three times, which is symbolic of Jesus being crucified, resurrected on the third day for us. And the last ingredient, which had to be mixed, was salt. Salt speaks to purity. Salt is able to affect a thousand times its own weight. Prayer helps you affect things that weigh more than you. And some would ask me, how, how in the world, how in the world are you able to do, how in the, if you don't pray, the weight of what God gives you will kill you. When you ignite this fire, it's a fire that's not kept in the sanctuary. It becomes addictive. When you know how God feels in a room and in a space, you're determined to get it. If I were to coach somebody and tell them that you have money problems, you don't have money problems, you have an incense problem. Because if you send up the right incense, it gives you clarity. It's the same thing the world does. They just copy whatever God is doing and try to pervert it. Because if you're trying to figure out what next to do, you don't need to go on indeed.com. You need to go on your knees.com <laughs> and send up some incense. Ignite some incense. Ignite some incense. Maybe you ever have bugs in your house? or bugs outside and you spray this bug spray on you, it's called off. And even though the bugs are there, they can't touch you. And you have the bug spray and someone doesn't have the bug spray, they're slapping themselves, they're itching themselves, they're scratching everywhere. And you sitting there chilling because you got something that's on you that's greater than anyone that's around you. And I want you to ignite this incense. There is an incense that's going to hit your business. It's going to hit your money. It's going to hit, it's greater than a stimulus, trust me. It is more powerful than anything you could ever ask, think, or imagine. It goes, it, you, you may have an alarm system on your keys. It's greater than that. And if you're sending your kids to school, you need to send them with smoke. If you're sending them in the world, you need to send them with smoke. I'm not asking you to let the teachers pray for them because they ain't going to pray like you are. I'm not telling you to let the Sunday school teachers pray for them, and they do pray, but they're not going to pray for them like you are. You've got to ignite the incense. I don't care if you're not a deacon. You need to learn how to ignite the incense. I don't care if you're not a minister. You need to learn how to ignite the incense. Do not be crippled by feeling like you need somebody to ignite it for you. Now, we're going to take a few moments and we're going to ignite the incense. And when you ignite the incense, when God's ear is to you, that's when you tell him what you need. Because some of you, the objective of prayer is to make sure you touch the ear of God. If you're not touching the ear of God, you're just not praying effectively. The objective of prayer is to ensure that you touch the ear of God. Well, how do I know I touch the ear of God? Well, number one, there is no one who can worship God and God not respond to the worship of his people. We are not forced to do it. We are created to do it. And God releases the incense that is on the inside of us, goes up. Now, let me help you. When you release your incense, we don't pray to angels. 
angels don't have the authority to be prayed to. But we pray to God who releases angels. No, baby, you don't need someone who died to be your angel to look over you. I need God to look over me because angels work for God. They, angels, let me say it again, angels work for God. Angels are not God. When you release your incense, the things that God doesn't come down to, he sends his angels to do. Most often when you pray, angels send the response. God's like, that's not enough for me to come down to. I'll send an angel. We be sitting there praying about the devil. And God's sitting there saying, they must not realize how powerful I am. I don't even talk to him. When I want to speak to him, I summon him. Some of you have been lighting your incense, but you pour it out with your own water because you think Satan's more powerful than God. You need to ignite your incense. Everybody has their own scent. And there's no one's scent that smells like yours. So even though I may be praying for you, God's like, it smells good, but I don't smell their scent. I need to smell their scent. I'm not looking for anybody else's substitute. I'm looking for their scent. And I want to call you to prayer for four minutes. So I want you to stand with me. I know you can't touch people. <laughs> Touching is a powerful form of agreement. But we're going to proverbially touch and agree. I'm going to do some little unorthodox. You that are watching online and in the chat, you're going to link up with someone in the chat space. And that's going to be your prayer buddy. We're going to get five of them. So if you got a row, we're going to divide your row in half. One side's going to be a prayer team. The other side's going to be a prayer team. So look down your row. Look at him and say, is it you or shall I look for another? Y'all got y'all team? Now, I can't touch you because I don't know if you're vaccinated or whatever, but we're going to be a team. Don't touch me. I'm not going to touch you, but we're going to pray together because I believe if you pray with me, great things are going to happen. No, y'all don't believe that. I, I believe if you pray with me, great things are going to happen. One can chase a thousand, but two can chase ten thousand. I I don't need one, I need three, I need four of you, I need five. Even in the chats, I'm linking up with you. I'm going to put my faith with yours. I'm going to lean. All right, y'all got y'all people? Y'all ain't, ain't look like y'all moved at all. Y'all look like y'all still looking at me. Y'all act like y'all scared to look at your neighbor. Huh? All right, y'all got it, y'all got it. So, all right, y'all got y'all y'all in the balcony. Y'all got people. Y'all in the balcony. Don't don't just okay. Y'all y'all get divided by the wall. That side's got that. Y'all y'all looking at each other like I don't want to talk or even pray with you. That's why I sat in the balcony to get away from that. But can I tell you that maybe what you need next is in this now. We're about to ignite the incense. It works wherever you go. It works in the corporate boardroom. You don't need to be deep. Like, oh my God, I don't know if we want to do this deal. But you can step outside the boardroom and say, give me a moment, let me think about some things and ignite your incense. Come back in there and say, now I'm clear on my thought. I know what I want to say. I don't go before a job interview without igniting the incense. I don't sign a contract without igniting the incense. I don't sit there and do any decisions without making the incense go before me. And I want this to be a standard practice in this house that I ignite the incense. I don't care if we're touching a drum, let's ignite the incense. I don't care if we're going over a part, let's ignite the incense. I don't care if we're going over a staff meeting, let's ignite the incense. Because God can do more for us than we can do not igniting the incense. If you ignite the incense, 
hands. It will fill the room. It will fill the room. It will fill the room. It will fill. Let, let, me, let, me, let me give you a secular example. Don't judge me. Don't leave the church. But um, when I was a kid um, and Mama Ritz's son in the neighborhood, Mama Ritz's son, not Mama Ritz, so don't get twisted. Her son and some of the kids in the neighborhood, they, they would smoke this thing called a black and mild. And I didn't smoke it, but it smelled good. Judge your mama, don't judge me. Never smoked it. But, when it, but the only way that scent would come out was somebody had to light it on fire. It didn't take everybody, but that scent that was locked up on the inside of it would never be, re some of you got a flashback, really, hold on, come back, come back, come back in the spirit. But, but the only way that thing would be ignited was somebody had to take a match and touch the tip of it. And once you touch the tip of it, what was on the inside of that fragrance would begin to fill the room. What I'm simply telling you as you begin to pray to God, whatever you've been believing God for is right in front of you and it is needing you to ignite the incense. We're not going to pray long. It's going to be a few minutes. But I'm asking you, I'm believing God that you will, you will be able to email and say, I begin to pray and supernatural things begin to happen for me. I got a raise on my job. I got fired from my job. But God let me get fired because he knew I'd never leave and wanted to show me a greater door. I want you to testify that my body was sick. I began to pray and something started to happen. I feel it. And something started to happen on the inside of me. I used to have anger issues, but I began to pray and something began to happen. I had childhood issues, but I began to ignite the incense and something happened. Man, you got sons, you got daughters. You teach them how to shoot. You teach them how to dribble you better teach them how to pray you better teach them how to ignite that fire I'm not saying you got to be perfect but I am saying you got to be prayerful I'm not saying you got to be perfect but I am saying you got to be prayerful I'm asking on the count of three we don't pray in our head because praying in your head don't do nothing we move angels when we open our mouths that's why it's important to open your mouth because you summon angels when you move your mouth mouth when you open your mouth you move angels I'm not just talking about angels in this church you send them to hospital rooms you send them to doctor's offices when you open up your mouth you summon and move the heavens on your behalf I'm asking you now and you and you may be 12 you may be 13 and you may be saying I don't know what to pray all you need to say is God have your way in my life he'll take a 13 year old's prayer and turn your life upside down. He'll take a 12-year-old's prayer and turn your world upside down. Woo. Now we got it. Now I was watching a basketball game. There was four, 7,000 people. It felt like 50,000. And they were cheering about a ball going in a hole. And that's okay, that's cool. But if you are in this place and you are watching online, even in your living room, you should be able to open your mouth and say something to God. God moves because praise is an igniter. Praise ignites. You can't tell a man you look good and him not square his shoulders up. You can't tell a woman, girl, you look fine and you know you look good with your bad self and they not square themselves up. You can't tell God how awesome he is and he not ignite himself. You can't tell God how powerful he is and he not ignite himself. On the count of three, I just want you to tell God how amazing he is, how amazing he is, how amazing he is. Would you open up your mouth one? Two, three. Woo! Come on, open up your mouth. Get on my soul. Woo! You are worthy. Hey, you are worthy. You are holy. You are amazing. You are incredible. There's none like you. I've searched high and low and ain't found nobody like you. 
I've been looking all over the world and ain't found nobody like you. There it is. Father, I thank you that you are a God that looks after me. Even in my messed up ways, even in my shortcomings, you still look after me. Even if I'm not perfect, you still care for me. Even though I don't know where to go and how to do it, but you still make a way for me. I thank you that you look over me and look over my soul. I thank you that you protect me from things seen and unseen. I thank you that angels are around me, heads round about. I thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed against me shall ever prosper. I thank you for the neighbor that stands beside me. I thank you for a greater awakening of who you are. I thank you for a greater awakening of who you are. I thank you for power that only comes from you. I thank you for authority that only comes from you. I thank you for my gift. I thank you for the anointing on my life. But I thank you it means nothing without you in it. I pray by the Spirit of God that you would show me the right path to go. I pray for my neighbor now in the name of Jesus that no weapon formed against them shall prosper every tongue that rises up against them shall be condemned in the name of Jesus I pray for their destiny I pray for their purpose I pray for their vision I pray that you order their steps I pray that you organize their steps in the name of the Lord I pray that you send ministering angels round about them I pray you cover them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet I I pray for their mind. I pray that the enemy will not fight them in their mind. I pray that every weapon that's been formed in their mind, you cast it down in the name of Jesus. I pray for peace of mind. I pray for peace of mind. I pray you give them the peace of the Holy Ghost. I pray that you'll give them peace of mind. I pray that they won't go back and forth wavering. I pray they'll know your will and they will not follow a stranger's voice. I I pray by the Spirit of God that you'll keep them alive to see their purpose, that they will not die prematurely, but they will live and see everything you declared for them. We come against every sickness and disease that would try to touch their body. We pray against every illness that would try to short circuit, circumvent the eternal plan of God for their lives. I pray they ignite this incense. I pray they ignite this incense. I pray they ignite this incense. Go forth and ignite this incense. Go forth and ignite this incense. Woo. Come on, let me hear your voice. 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 Woo, there's the angels coming. Let me hear your voice. Fresh fire, fresh fire. Fresh fire, fresh fire. Show me where to go. Show me what to do. Show me in the name of Jesus. Let me make the right decisions. Show me where to go. Show me what to do. We cover your marriage. We cover your marriage. We cover your marriage. We cover your marriage, Jesus. 
We come against the little boy that would steal your manhood in the name of Jesus. We come against your insecurity. We come against your insecurity. We come against your insecurity. We speak against your past that will try to rob you of your future. Father, lift up a standard, a wall against us in our past in the name of the Lord. Father, those ugly spaces, those ugly places that try to pull us backwards, I pray you put a wall between us now in the name of Jesus. I pray you put a wall between us in depression. I pray you put a wall between us in depression. I pray you put a wall between us in despair. Come on, that's the part you need to lift your voice at. I pray you put a wall between us in depression. I pray you put a wall between us in despair in the name of Jesus. Lift up the hedge in the name of Jesus. Lift up the wall in the name of Jesus. The second guessing that I'm not enough. The second guessing that I'm not worthy enough. The second guessing that I'm not good enough. We come against it in the name of Jesus. We come against the low self-worth. The talking down to yourself. The saying that I'm not qualified. I'm not worthy enough. We speak against it in the name of Jesus. The inferiority complex. The idea that you're not worthy to do what God called you to do you. The asking God to send somebody else because you don't want to go. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against low self-worth. In the name of Jesus. Woo. If you have somebody that's under the age of 12, push them towards this altar. I want to pray against low self-esteem, low self-worth in the name of Jesus. Bring them down here. I'm not laying hands. I'm just praying for them. These are our C's, middle school kids, high school kids. I want you to bring them. Send them down to this altar. Father, in the name of Jesus, send the fire of the Holy Spirit. Send the fire of the Holy Spirit. This is the next generation. This is your next generation. Send the anointing of God that makes them feel affirmed, that lets them know they're called by you, that lets them know they're anointed by you. Father, I pray for these dragons slayers, these giant killers, that they will be anointed and called by you in the name of Jesus. I pray no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Every young folk, I want you to lift your hands at this altar. You may be 12, you may be 16, you may have swag, you may be as cool as it comes, you may have all the drip in the world, but I want you to lift your hands as you're young. I want you to lift your hands. Father, I pray that the anointing of the Most High God would rest upon these children, that they'll have self-esteem, that they'll have self-worth, that God we come against every premature death that will try to steal their life, that will try to take who they are. We come against identity issues, self-worth issues, longing to know who they are in the name of Jesus. We come against peer pressure, bullying in the name of Jesus, words of discouragement, words of arrows that speak against who they are their purpose we come against things that parents don't know mamas don't know daddies don't know the things that they struggle with I pray Holy Spirit that you would send your anointing to break up every foul ground break up every word curse that's been spoken over their lives allow them to live in the liberality of your spirit allow them to live in the unction of your anointing I pray for freedom in their minds freedom in their souls souls. We come against low self-esteem. We come against suicide in the name of Jesus. We come against addictions in the name of Jesus. I pray by the Spirit of the Most High God that you would anoint our children to be exactly what you call them to be, that you purpose them to be. We pray over their minds, that their minds be renewed, that strongholds that are trying to be built in their heart would be dismantled in the name of Jesus. I pray I pray, God, that you'll give them purpose. I pray that you'll give them destiny. I pray that you'll give them wisdom. I call them out of the bed of affliction, out of the place.
plan of the wicked one and in the purpose now Jesus father I thank you that you will cause them to stray to stray away from evil to stray away from evil to stray away from evil I pray by the Spirit of the Most High by you've anointed us to do your work and your will that you would not allow them to be complicit in the plan of Satan come out of the identity crisis come out of the self-esteem crisis come out of the low self-worth crisis we speak against every curse every word that was spoken negatively over your family over your bloodline come up into the plan of God come up into the destiny of God Freedom in the name of Jesus. We pray for freedom in the name of Jesus. In the name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Protect their purity in the name of Jesus. Protect their innocence in the name of Jesus. Have your way, have your way, have your way. Have your way, have your way. Have your way, 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 have your way. Let it be so in your home, whether you got your hands on your children in the living room in front of the computer, let this same anointing touch their hearts, touch their minds, touch their souls, touch their bodies.
It's a cry of a generation. Have your way. Father, I, I've attempted to do everything that you've asked. Pray that nothing will fall to the ground that's been sown in this place. Chakandra, I need you to come and uh, she needs a mama. Come on, we're going. Can you just lift your hands wherever you are online in this place? Father. So God, thank you. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for igniting us. Thank you for showing us the way. We honor you for it. We praise you for it. We know it's, it's established by you. In Jesus' name. You receive that, would you clap your hands everywhere? Yeah.